we were seeing that some species like Egyptian vultures were declining a lot more rapidly than others, but nobody had a really good sense of why that was. So I wanted to come in and kind of look at differences in behavior and particularly differences in habitat use between the species that might give us a better sense of why some were more susceptible to what was happening than others. In addition, that also gives you a better sense of what the threats really are. The feeling was that poisoning was a major, major issue, but there is not a lot of evidence for that. So it's the sort of thing where you know what's happening, but you don't really know how important it is until you start investigating a little further. We're trapping three different species of vultures. So we're looking at the African whiteback, the repels, and the lappet-faced vulture, and trying to see where they go. Each of the species differ in many aspects of their ecology, and it's likely that they'll differ in their movement patterns as well. So we're going out, driving around, looking for, for a carcass that hopefully has a lot of birds on it already, and then putting down the traps and catching a bird and getting those, those units and wing tags onto the vultures. So now we're attaching the GSM GPS unit. So you can see the unit is attached as a simple backpack strapped around each wing. So what we found is that birds that get to the carcass early and also birds that are very large, dominant, and social, they use the best habitats. So those are the birds that spend the majority of their time in the park. Other species that are sort of smaller, maybe not as quick at finding the carcass, they end up using these suboptimal habitats, habitats that have lower wildlife density and also sometimes higher human settlement density. That helps to explain why Egyptian vultures are declining the most rapidly, why hoodeds seem to be following suit. By putting the transmitters on, we've been able to see that a bird that lives in the Mara can travel as far north as Sudan and Ethiopia, and as far south as Ruaha National Park in Tanzania. What we know from the, the transmitters is that the birds are concentrating in the Mara during the dry season, mm -hmm. so from July to October every year, mm -hmm. and that's an incredible management tool. That means you can count the entire East African population in a single location, um, and you've got a three-month period in which to do that. So it, it sort of solidifies that this, this is a large-scale decline and that it's happening over a large region.